Hello there. Bogged down by internal strife, mediocrity and loose cannons, can the Labour Party ever recover? Firstly, please subscribe and like this video to give my channel a boost. And I'm always uploading new content, so please do check back daily. And a big thanks to my Patreon and PayPal supporters. The Tories must be chortling over their Earl Grey tea and scrambled duck's eggs on toast made from Harrods Roquefort and Almond sourdough bread as they survey the demolition site that was once the Labour Party. And when looking at their copy of the FT, they might have another chuckle when they see the face of the Labour Party leader Keir Starmer staring back at them with his usual rabbit stuck in the headlights with no clue what to do look about him. And what a shallow and unimaginative bunch he has with him on the front benches. But worse, Starmer now has the guy he replaced, Jeremy Corbyn, engaged in a court action against him. When the Equality and Human Rights Commission report on anti-Semitism in Labour surfaced, Starmer gave Corbyn the old heave-ho. But Corbyn was later reinstated by the Labour Party National Executive Council, but Keir Starmer decided to withhold the party whip from Corbyn. And Corbyn is arguing his case to have the whip reinstated through the courts. Corbyn is a thorn in Starmer's side and he is not going to go away. Jeremy Corbyn also has oodles of support in the Labour Party. Hard left-wing support. And remember, had Labour won that last general election in December 2019, it would be Calamity Corbyn and his crowd running the country right now. Although I do use the word running very loosely, as the Brexit deal Corbyn would have forged with the European Union would have almost certainly tied the UK right down to following the Brussels rulebook and answering to the European Court of Justice. Either that, or the Brexit implementation period would have been extended and we'd still be under EU control. So Corbyn wouldn't be running the country, he'd have just continued to pass on EU instructions. But further, we now know what Corbyn's Covid vaccine programme would be. And that would be to give those jabs away. Yes, Corbyn has accused the Prime Minister Boris Johnson of vaccine nationalism. Whilst launching his new Project for Peace and Justice on Sunday, he pointed to the 357 million vaccine doses the UK has ordered and said, Some rich countries have acquired enough doses of vaccine for their entire population to be vaccinated three times over, while nine out of ten people in poor countries will not even receive a vaccine this year. If the Covid emergency has taught us anything, it's just how connected we all are and that global problems cannot be fully addressed by local solutions. If vaccines are to end the pandemic, 60% of the world must be inoculated to achieve that immunity. And he also said that vaccine nationalism had put paid to the global solidarity and coordinated action needed to roll out coronavirus vaccines for the entire world. Now, it's claimed that these 357 million doses, given that some need two shots to be effective, that those 357 million doses are enough to inoculate the UK population three times over. But what might be overlooked is that the UK has secured access to vaccines for the UK, Crown dependencies and overseas territories. So we are not just UK-centric with this. Not only that the UK taxpayer has given a UN-led project £548 million to help deliver 1 billion vaccine doses to 92 developing countries over the course of this year. On this one, I do hope they can get around any local corruption to ensure that vaccines get to those that need them, not end up being sold off to the rich and powerful to make a profit from. But just think about Corbyn with his fingers on the levers of power. He'd give away any chance of a return to normality in the UK by diverting our vaccines elsewhere. 
And as the UK represents about 0.87% of the global population, those doses would probably cover about 2.6% of the Earth's people at best. And TV presenter Carol Maloney had a go at Corbyn's suggestion, saying... We're hearing already that there is a postcode lottery in this country and there is not enough vaccines in certain areas. So no, we can't afford to give away. It's not our job. We're a small island. It's not our job to look after the rest of the world. Yes, we've got to help when we can when we're in a position to, but currently we're not. But one of the main drivers to ordering all of those 357 million vaccines from different suppliers was no one could be sure which ones would work, if any. So building in a failure rate to the ordering was a sensible thing to do. Also, Jeremy Corbyn would probably have done the socialist thing and poured all our money into the EU-led vaccine programme. And look where they're at with this at the moment. If vaccines are to be the way ahead, then I'm not sure slowing down the process and thinly distributing them out on some misplaced idea of fairness works. And that brings me on to Mark Drakeford. The Welsh First Minister's socialist credentials shone through like a laser beam, and boy was he, and Welsh Labour, bitten by it. Drakeford claimed that there were not enough vaccines to supply a constant stream of inoculations, so what he did was slow down the vaccination process so that the teams injecting the vaccines into people's arms wouldn't be left with nothing to do. We won't get another delivery of that until the end of January, probably the beginning of February, he said. We have to use that over that six-week stretch. It would be logistically very damaging to try and use all of that in the first week and then have all our vaccinators standing around with nothing to do for another month. Sounds like something out of the USSR era, doesn't it? And he's taken a lot of stick about that. And it doesn't help that he's statistically lagging behind England, Scotland and Northern Ireland in rolling the vaccines out. By Saturday, Wales had vaccinated 4% of its population. Scotland had achieved 4.1%. England, 5.9%. And Northern Ireland romped ahead with 7.4%. And the Welsh Conservative leader, Paul Davies, called it astonishing and said, This is a matter of life and death, and that's why it's so crucial now that they get these vaccines out to people as soon as possible. The obvious point being that a vaccine is better off in someone's arm than in a file in a refrigerator. But Drakeford seems to have missed that vital point. Now, Welsh Labour has been sinking in the polls for a few months. A recent YouGov poll put them on 34%, which is 4% down on an October YouGov poll. The Tories were next with 26%, having dropped 1%. The beneficiaries were Plaid, the Greens and the Lib Dems, but also Nigel Farage's Reform UK came into the fray at 5%, the same sort of level as the Greens. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see Welsh Labour slip further in the polls in the coming weeks. In the meantime, Boris has been enjoying a boost to his standing, a boost of 20% from 41% in October to 61% in January while all that Captain Keir Hindsight can do is keep repeating his mantra that the government must act faster. Strange when it does seem to be acting faster than most. Were the Labour Party in charge, whether under Corbyn or Starmer, we'd be looking at an utter omni-shambles. All the above does not point to a Labour Party ready for UK national leadership. Labour is not ready for power and won't be for many a year and one suspects that the Tories will be sorely tempted to push those May elections further on into the year. Anyway, if you want to hear more from me, please don't forget to subscribe and also press that little bell, or you won't get any notifications. And if you want to see more of me, buy a mug with my mug on it by following the link in the descriptions box below and support me on Patreon or PayPal. So what do you think about the Labour Party currently? Please share and comment and thank you for watching.